we're happy to announce that Ben F gave us a new version upgrade. He gave us two actually. We were running with version 3.4. He updated to 3.41 and then a day or two later upgraded to 3.42. So this particular video tutorial is going to explain the differences between 3.40 and version 3.41 and 3.42. Okay, let's take a look at some of the new features in version 3.42. If we scroll down here to the trigger level, trigger menu I should say, hit the long M key, we'll do a fit operation by holding the long M key while in trigger mode. And notice, just like before, it'll find the best waveform. What's different is that while we're in the fit mode, anytime I change a VD, TD, or trigger function, any one of those three, changing any one of those three, changing sensitivity. We'll take it out of the fit mode, and it went back to auto trigger mode, as shown up here. So that's a good improvement. Now it works like all the professional scopes do. You use your fit mode to find it, and as soon as you try to change something, it falls out of fit mode into whatever you want to change it to. So that's a nice feature. Like I say, the trigger func function, TD function, VD function, any one of those three will pull it out of fit mode back into auto mode. Another enhancement of version 3.42 is in the trigger pop-up menu. It used to be whenever we selected the trigger pop-up menu and we went down here and we changed the trigger sensitivity, it would display the trigger sensitivity. It used to be if you went to level now, trigger level and moved it, the sensitivity lines would disappear, but now they don't. Now we can adjust the sensitivity, put the sensitivity any place on the screen, and just like before the trigger level is the center of these two lines. If you don't want to see the trigger sensitivity any longer, simply scroll down here to trigger sensitivity, hold the M key for extended period of time, and bingo, sensitivity triggers are gone. I mean, the sensitivity lines are gone. So that's a very nice new feature for people that want to trigger on abnormal portions of a waveform. Another nice user friendly enhancement has to do with the FI pop-up menu as shown here. Notice at the bottom we have um, S0001 file. Before we can only scroll right, now we can scroll left. So for some reason you got to get to file number 900, it's much easier to get there. So we can now scroll either direction. In addition to that, we come down here under the load functions, we have a load profile and a load reference. And both of these functions, if you watch down here at the display right here, you see that as I scroll, it takes alphanumeric file names now. That file name is out there on the SD card. Right now I only have two DAT files out there. If you scroll up to the load profile, same thing, we can save, we can load it from Flash, we can load it from these file names, which I created with the PC, and you can also load the number names as created by the nano by default. One other item that needs clarification, it's not an improvement on version 3.42, however it's an improvement of the previous lesson. If you go down here to save something, let's say something that takes a while to save, we'll save an image. As we discussed in the previous lesson, when you hold the M key, well first of all notice down there is a red file name. S001.bmp is already on the SD card. So if we hold the long M, we're going to write over the top of it, and what's there is gone. So you usually want to scroll to where there's no red file name. So the red file name simply means that you're about to overwrite something. Or in this case, the transition of the red file name means it's in the process of writing something. Now if you go up to something that loads a file, you'll never see a red file name. 
because it's, it's obvious. Red means danger. We're not, there's no danger in loading anything. The only danger is if you're overriding something and you aren't aware of it. So that's how the red file name process actually works. And last but not least, in version 3.42, we now have a hot swappable SD card. I'm going to unplug the USB cable so I can get my thumb down here. I'm going to remove the SD card. Pull it completely out. Now I'm going to cycle the power to the DSO Nano. Now I'm going to try to save a file under the FI menu, pop-up menu. I'm going to save an image file, S001. Then hold it long enough. I hold the M key a little bit longer. I held it, and it says there's no card. Now we powered it up without a card. There is no card. So I'm going to plug in a card to prove that it's hot swappable. Okay, we plugged in a card while the nano is up and running. Go back down here. We want to save that same feature. We select the pop-up menu. We hold the long M. First, I'll select a new file name. Let's save it under S003. Hold the long M, and it works fine. It saves the file. So the card here should be gone. It's now a hot swappable SD card. Another nice feature. One, one last item of considerable importance it has to do with using the USB cable to access the SD card on your Nano. I'm going to plug in a Nano USB cable right now. Once you use your computer to access these files, you need to use a, a safe hardware removal process before you pull out this USB card or before you turn off the Nano. The reason is there may be some write cache delays pending, and if the file isn't closed properly, it could corrupt your directory on the SD card. In Windows XP, notice down here we have the DSO Nano 16 SD card selected while it is installed in the DSO Nano. So the proper way to unmount this particular SD card is come down here in Windows XP and there's an icon right here safely remove hardware. So you left click on the icon and we've got to pick that drive letter F and we're going to left click on that. Now it says to safe to remove the hardware. That means any files that were pending a write cache have been closed. You notice the volume F disappeared over here. So that's the proper way to exit in Windows and any other operating system, you got to find whatever it is that allows you to unmount that SD card drive, and then it's safe to remove the card or turn off the DSO Nano.